chemistry students. Now we're going to talk about writing chemical equations. So when you write chemical equations, you need to remember that the reactants are written on the left side of a chemical equation. Products are written on the right side. An arrow pointing to the right means yield. First step, you write the correct formulas for each of the reactants. You put a plus sign between the reactants to separate them. In a word problem, a plus sign will mean added to or reacts with. So an example would be hydrochloric acid reacts with silver. So you would have hydrochloric acid plus reacts with silver and you would put AG. Second step is you draw a yield arrow. That is just an arrow pointing to the right. Third step is you write the correct formulas for each of the products. And remember, you put a plus sign between the products to separate them. Step four, you need to balance the equation. Example, let's look at our reactants. It says a solid piece of zinc reacts with hydrochloric acid. So we have zinc reacts with means plus and then hydrochloric acid to produce so that means that we have an arrow to produce a solution of zinc chloride and hydrogen gas as the products so the first thing we need to do a solid piece of zinc well we know that zinc or you should know that zinc is zn and I'm going to put an s behind it to indicate that it is a solid piece. Reacts with, so now I'm going to put a plus sign, hydrochloric acid. Now we're going to have to remember our acid naming rules. Hydro and ic and acid. All right, acid means that it begins with an H plus. Hydro and ic. I ate something icky. Eight and ick, it ends in ick, but it also begins with hydro, so that's not going to work. All night, I was nauseous. It ends in ick, not ike, so that doesn't work. When I took a ride on a hydraulic plane, hydro, ick, all right, that works. A ride on a hydraulic plane. So on that, we take off the hydro, we change our ick to ide, and we have chloride. So chloride is right here, chlorine. We change our IDE to INE. Chlorine is Cl. It's in group 17, which means it has seven valence shell electrons. So its oxidation number is a minus one because it is easier to gain one electron than lose seven. You gain one, that's your oxidation number. So I'm going to, I'm going to put this over here. You have your H plus and your Cl minus. This one goes down by the H make an H and this one goes down by the CL to make a CL we never write our ones so that is our formula for hydrochloric acid now it says to produce a solution so I know I have to put my yields arrow because it says produce a solution of zinc chloride so once again we need to find out what zinc chloride looks like we know that zinc is a Zn and zinc is located right here on the periodic table it is one of the transition metals that does not change its oxidation number and it has an oxidation number of two we will look at that right up there so zinc has a plus two we already know chloride has a minus one charge so I'm gonna put Cl minus one that one goes down by the Zn, and we never put ones. This two goes down by the Cl. So the formula for zinc chloride is ZnCl2. It says it is a solution. That means that it is aqueous. It is dissolved in water. So I'm going to put the Aq behind there. Here it says and hydrogen gas, so I'm going to put a plus because there's an and hydrogen gas. This is when you need to remember the last video are diatomics. Hydrogen is a diatomic, which means it exists as 
two, H2. It is a gas, so I'm going to put under here a subscript of G that says gas. Now we have just done all of our three steps. We need to balance. So let's balance. Remember, we do our metals first. Zinc right here is a metal, so I'm gonna put it down here. Next step is uh, polyatomics. We have no polyatomics here, so I'm gonna go to the next one, which are non-metals. Our next non-metal is Cl, so I'm gonna put Cl, and then we do hydrogens and oxygens last. There's a hydrogen here. All right, let's balance our metals first. Over here, we have one zinc, and on the product side, we have one zinc. So our zincs are already balanced. Now let's do our CLs. On the reactant side, we have one CL. And on our product side, we have two CLs right here, CL2. So we have two. We need to balance them. We need to have two on the reactant side. So this is the only place, HCl, hydrochloric acid, is the only place that we can add another chlorine. Remember, we have to add to the beginning or the front. We now have two CLs. Now let's ba balance our hydrogens. Over here, we have two hydrogens on the reactant side with our two HCl. And over here on the product side, we have two hydrogens with our gas. We are now balanced. This is a balanced equation. Guys, if you cannot write these formulas correctly, then you will not be able to balance these correctly. It's very important that you know how to convert a word into a chemical formula, a word formula into a chemical formula. It's very, very important that you know how to do this. Okay, let's go on to the next example. All right, we have sulfuric acid is reacted with a solution of sodium hydroxide to produce a solution of sodium sulfate and water as the only products. So the first thing we do is write the formulas for our reactants. What we have is reacted with, so sulfuric acid has to be one of our reactants, is reacted with, so this is a plus sign, this is where we're going to put a plus sign, a solution of sodium hydroxide, then it says to produce, so this produce, to produce, we will have an arrow there. A solution of sodium sulfate, so this has to be one of our products, and and, this and tells us that it is a plus sign, and water as the only products. So we have sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide as our reactants, sodium sulfate, and water as our products. So let's do our acid first. Sulfuric acid, all acids start with an H, plus. Sulfuric. I ate something icky. Well, this ends in ick, so that means I'm going to change the ending to eight. In sulfur and phosphorus, we always take off the UR, so this is sulfate. If we look on our polyatomic ions under sulfate, which is right here, it is SO4 with a minus two charge. So up here, SO4, with a minus two charge. That two goes down by our H, which makes it H2. This one goes down by the SO4, and since there's only one, we don't need to put it, and we don't need to put the parentheses. So the formula for sulfuric acid is H2SO4. So I'm gonna write that down here, H2SO4, and then it's reacted with, reacted with, so I'm gonna put a plus. Sodium is right here. It is in group one, and it has one valence shell electron, which means it is easier to lose one than gain six. So we're gonna have Na plus one and hydroxide. Hydroxide is found on your polyatomics and is located right here. And it has an OH minus. So I'm going to put a parentheses and an OH minus. This is a parentheses. The one by the OH minus goes down by the sodium and we never put ones. And this one down by the hydroxide goes down, I'm sorry, by the sodium goes down by the hydroxide and since there's only one, we do not need to put parentheses. So the formula for sodium hydroxide is NaOH. So 
So I'm right here. Now it says to produce, so I'm going to draw my yields arrow. A solution of sodium sulfate. We already know that sodium looks like Na. And sulfate, we already know, is SO4 with a minus 2 charge. This 2 goes down by the sodium. This 1 goes down by the sulfate. And since it's 1, we don't need to put parentheses. So the formula for sodium sulfate is Na2SO4. And so I'm going to put a plus sign in water. You should know that the chemical formula for water is H2O. Now it says here a solution, so I am going to put, I'm going to put aqueous for a solution. Now let's balance. First thing we do is balance our metals. The only metal we have here is sodium. The next thing we do is balance our polyatomics if they do not separate and change. So here our polyatomic is SO4. And on the product side, it stays as an SO4. So I'm going to keep it as an SO4 down here. The next one we have is an OH. If it stays as an OH, this polyatomic stays as an OH on the product, then we can keep it as an OH. But it does not. So we need to separate them into its hydrogens and oxygens. So uh, we always do oxygen first. So I'm going to put oxygen here and then hydrogen. We've accounted for all of our elements. Now we need to balance. We're going to balance our metals first. Over here on the reactant side, we have one sodium. And on our product side, we have two. So we need to make sure that we have two sodiums on our reactant side. The only way we can do that is put the coefficient in front. We now have two NAs. Now let's do our sulfur sulfates. So we have one sulfate over here on the reactant side, and we have one sulfate over here on the product side. Now let's do our oxygens. We do not count this oxygen in our oxygens down here because we've already taken care of our sulfates. Okay, so we do not count this oxygen here. Now we do have two oxygens right here. Two times this subscript of one is two. So we have two oxygens on the reactant side. And now let's see how many oxygens we have over here. We do not count this because we've already accounted for this oxygen and the sulfate. So we are not going to count it again. We're only going to count this oxygen right here. And there is one. We need to put another oxygen on the product side. So we need two. And the only way we can do that is put a two in front. Okay, we, need, we now have two oxygens. So now we need to do the, the hydrogen. We need to account for this hydrogen because we have not done that. And we also need to account for this hydrogen. So we have two hydrogens here. And we have two hydrogens here. Two times one is two. So we have a total of four hydrogens on the reactant side. Now on the product side, we have two H2Os. And each H2O has two hydrogens. So two times two is four. We have four hydrogens on each side, so we are balanced. Now what I would like for you to do is practice this problem on your own and the next one, and then come back and check your answers. OK, go ahead and check your answers. Practice this problem and then come back and check. OK, check your answers. What I want you to remember is that silver has an oxidation number of plus one. You guys are done.